team is working on a mining robot. I, my team is Team Phoenix. I am Anthony. And yeah. Uh, uh, the function of the robot, mainly the research, well, the research questions of it. What are we going to use for a steering system? We don't know right now. I'm thinking of tracks rotating in different directions. Um, how would we have remote access to the robot? Uh, most likely it will be automated, but it will send out a signal to Earth and, yeah. Um, what will the robot look like? Probably very similar to the, uh, Razor, but with a big bucket on it. Uh, what the robot will be mining? Uh, the most common, well, the common materials that are found on Mars and Moon, which are the planets, <coughs> uh, the planet and the moon that will be used on, uh, the safest materials that and most useful that we can get from it would be magnesium, aluminum, silicon, iron, and uh, titanium, sil silver, germanium, rhenium, rhenium, uh, rhenium, uh, rhenium. Uh, Samarium, uh, gadolinium, uh, gold, palladium, iridium, rubium, uh, platinum, rhodium, and europium. Um, what will the robot use to mine? Uh, either a drill or some kind of blade to mine the materials it needs. The, this mining tool will be attached to the robot's arm. Uh, this robot will have a second arm that will pick up the materials that materials that it mines. It will move. Will be able to move a, a shovel that will have a vacuum built in. So what it digs will get sucked up into the vacuum, and then it will be transferred and stored in its storage container. Where the robot will store its materials that it mines. The robot will have a storage container attached to it where it can store materials and it mines on itself. The container will be made out of a durable and light material, most likely titanium. And it'll kind of look like a cardboard box. Um, what will power the robot? Um, the robot will have a series of solar panels that will be linked to the robot's batteries. So long as there's sunlight in the area, the batteries will not run out as fast or at all. Why we chose this topic, well, we thought researching a mining robot would be fun, I guess, and knowing the process of powering it efficiently would be interesting. We think that this topic will be interesting in the robot will be beneficial with its mining in space. And here is where you can contact us and each job we each have in my team. That's it. Any feedback or questions for Anthony? So um, the main objective of the robot is to mine, right? Yeah. So. I mean, for like computers and all that stuff, a lot of the materials that it will be mining can be used for vehicles, uh, computers, robots, all that kind of stuff. So is this with the objective of sending the minerals back to Earth? Uh, well, it depends. If we're going to end up starting a colony on either Mars or on the moon, these materials can be more than useful on those two places. So it's like an attempt at self-sustainability? Yes.
I mean, he's just giving you that yeah, suggestion I, I now. You're just at the beginning of your research, so this is yeah. good that he's yeah, giving yeah. you this advice. Thank you, but uh, I mean, we don't know for sure yet. There probably are different ways that we could probably sift through it and like process it all into being actually useful. But at the same time, there is definitely the issue of creating like alloys and all that. And well, I had to sift through all those things to make sure like none of them would really react with each other or ruin the robot itself by either blowing up or in general like gallium creating alloys with basically any metal touches, mainly aluminum. But uh, there are probably definitely ways that uh, we could create uh, possible ways of creating decent metals out of what we mine while making it efficient. But we're not sure yet. Any other feedback? All right. I think I'm joking. Okay, we are Team 14. Our thing is hoovering up lunar dust bunnies. As you can guess, we are dealing with lunar dust on the moon's surface, its effects, and how to negate them. Uh, yeah. My name is Jacob Patzer. This is Aaron Spindell. It's true. Next slide, my friend. Okay, the NASA Ice Challenge. For this year, the NASA Ice Challenge is creating a sustainable mission to the moon. And we're sp specifically looking at the sustainable part of that, long-term sustainability. Because the uh, dust that is on the moon is a very, very dangerous factor when it comes to long-term sustainability, breaking down over time really just about anything. Uh, so these dust particles, um they build up over time, and they make they make up most of the um, regolith of the moon. Uh, so when they are not being shielded by the Earth, uh, they have a slight charge, which attracts them to uh, like humans and things like that. Like stack electricity, uh, like when you have that shirt that you get sparks off of, that when it sticks to your clothes, kind of, or when your hair stands on end. It's that kind of idea of stack electricity. Uh, so these dust particles, they stick to your skin, they stick to your whatever, uh, your suit, and, and yeah, so they, so some uh, astronauts, they bring it into the, the spaceship, or the uh, station, and uh, on some occasions, one astronaut had uh, some of it, like, uh, give an allergic reaction, or uh, some researchers are worried about uh, it getting into your lungs and ruining, uh, like, just your internals. So uh, our group, our objective is to find ways to clean up and uh, prevent or block these particles from building up and uh, just make it so that we can sustain ourselves against these kinds of dusts. This dust is so penetrative that uh, during the Apollo mission, they actually took some dust samples, put them into a hermetically sealed container that nothing should have been able to break out of, and when they brought it back in, dust was leaking outside of it. It had cut right through it. Uh, this its ability to cut so deeply and to stick onto anything comes one from its uh, electric charge given to it by solar radiation and also the fact that the asteroids that hit the uh, moon surface create very small 
very finely pointed daggers of glass and iron that can, as you know, glass is sharp and can cut very deeply. Yeah. Yes. Alright. So I'm Jacob Patzer. Um, I'm very passionate about science and uh, of learning, space with expansion, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm hardworking and uh, I just enjoy these kinds of things. Yeah. I'm Aaron Spindell and I like space. Uh, our emails are right next to our pictures, uh, and that's it. <coughs>
when they're in front of when the sun is uh, when the solar radiation is actually hitting them, hitting these particles, they <coughs> gain that electric charge because they are being excited by the uh, extreme amount of beta radiation that's coming towards them. Now beta, have, beta is electron, right? Well, I, I have no idea. Um, have you ever thought about trying to harness energy from it? We haven't thought of harnessing energy from it. We have thought of harnessing materials from it. And, uh, but that's also a good idea. There is actually uh, the possibility of a kind of ionic wind, because on one side you have slightly less positive particles because they haven't been in the sun for as long, and on the other side you have more positive particles because they've been ga gaining that radiation from the sun and have their electrons excited to the point of becoming a plasma. So you, I don't think there's been any actual proof of this ionic wind, but in that situation where you have slightly less positive uh, hemisphere and a slightly more positive hemisphere, you could have a form of dust wind that could be harnessed, similar to how wind works on our own planet. I mean, you could also turn the moon 